this place is particularly gifted with lots of wood and, and uh, Hampshire as a, as a county. Yes, I really love trees. I'm a member of the Woodland Trust. I don't know if you've heard of the Woodland Trust. It brings a lot to, um, it's nice to come here and kind of sit by them in the summer and when they've all got like the leaves and it brings more atmosphere I guess and more it's just scenic nice. views, it's lovely. I've got lots of trees in my garden, particularly fruit trees. I like apple trees and plum trees. I, I grew up in the country um, and so always had a kind of bond with, with nature. And, we we um, were climbing trees like... <laughs> Last, last summer, summer we, after we finished our exams we went and climbed a tree and like, yeah. kind of just sat there and talked because yeah. we were, were cool yeah i always try to plant trees every year very important and i moved here because it was so woody and lovely trees are very important as we know environmentally they clean our air and they're um, important The Forestry Commission is an organisation that was put together by the government in 1919. So it's back between the two world wars and it was decided that there was a need to increase the tree cover in this country. The tree cover then was only about 5% and the remit of the Forestry Commission was to in increase tree cover in this country and produce timber for the nation. Well, since then, Tree cover has increased to about 12%. We do what, what we term multi-purpose forestry. So whilst producing timber, we also are expected to provide what you might call social forestry, which is providing green space for the public to enhance people's quality of life and give people access to the countryside. The Forestry Commission is organised so that we are split up into the different countries in the UK. So there's Forestry Commission England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Each country separates itself into different districts. And then the districts are separated up into different beats. work from trees. This is a drawing produced by putting the drawing paper which covered with glue under the tree. The fallen leaves and grains of the tree will be wrecked on the paper by the wind's effect. This is the drawing randomly by the nature. We can imagine how the drawing will be or we will be surprised. It's nature time. I'm Alex Harley, Alexandra Harley. Um, and I'm a sculptor. I've been working since I left college. Primarily in wood. That's what I normally work in. I, I'm quite happy to work in lots of other materials. A lot of my maquettes, the, the sort of initial ideas I make in paper and try things out because it's a very, very fast way of, of getting ideas together. Um, but I also use clay and other materials as well to, to just sort of think an idea through, really. Um, and drawing is really important to me, but at the end of the day, I, all of that gets rolled up and I work in wood. I hold exhibitions. Um, there are, I've, uh, last year, um, I had an exhibition at the Royal Society of British Sculptors, and I'm a member of that. I was elected uh, back in 2000. So that's a fantastic thing to do. It's a brilliant, brilliant organisation. It's there specifically to support 
sculptors. So I had an exhibition with them last year. Um, I've got a couple of exhibitions coming up this year. There's a, a, um, a collection of I teach at the City Lit, so there's, the tutors there are holding an exhibition together. I've been invited, I'm so thrilled, but I'm working out in um, New Hampshire in September and October, and I'm going to be, um, it's a stone carving symposium, and I'm going to be out there working. That's going to be so exciting. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm making some plans already. This, this is a collection of studios here, there's painters and I think I'm the only sculptor that's a potter. Um, and there's lots and lots of artists in the area. We hold an open studios um, every year, so this will be my first opportunity to be in that. That's in July, I think. So it's always important to get the work out. It's really, really good for getting a fresh perspective on it, getting other people coming in and making comments. What I don't like to do is to have a deadline. Um, I like to be able to make the work and then submit it for exhibitions and different places. I don't like being under pressure to produce a new piece of work for an exhibition. I, I, it never works and I never feel happy with the work that I produce. I tend to work on my own, I come into the studio, we just keep working away until I'm comfortable with the piece of work, until either the wood just collapses and uh, I've given up on it, or the sculpture's absolutely what I'm aiming for, and then that's it. And then I stop, and then the, I take the photographs, then I submit it, and then I hope, hope to goodness that I get an exhibition. So that's how that goes. My name's uh, Colin Norgate and I have been working in wood for over 20 years now since my training. Uh, I've always had an interest in wood since I've uh, been much younger. I now own my own workshop um, making various items in wood from furniture right through to turning, letter carving and uh, design products for uh, one-offs for clients. I work mainly in woods which are from this country, so we're very lucky in this country because we've got a, a huge variety of uh, timbers available. Um, I use a certain amount of wood off the, the farm where my workshop is situated, so whenever a tree comes down on the farm I tend to get sort of first refusal on it. I, I use this mainly for my turning products, but uh, I, um, I go locally for my um, sort of sawn up timber, which I make my furniture from. But I mainly use quite a lot of oak, because um, it's quite a, like a neutral timber, which fits in most situations. I can make uh, sort of very sort of, you know, ba basic and heavy furniture, right through to a, a very fine piece with sort of laminated curves and veneer work. Now, forest research is responsible for studying things such as tree diseases, which include fungus and pests. It also um, is responsible for researching into tree propagation so that we know how best to make trees grow. Also, it researches into which trees are the most appropriate to plant with regard to timber production. 
and also other things to do with um, the aesthetic pleasure of recreational trees and um, which foreign species grow well in this country. And so there's quite a lot of things that the for uh, forest research does. The piece of work that I, I like the best is the one that I'm just about to finish. It's just about to start, actually. That's normally the one that I'm really excited about because getting started and you think, wow, this is going to do everything that you want it to do, and it never does. It's why you carry on making another bit because you want to get better and better and better. So I'm always really in love with the, first, with the start of a new piece. But there are one or two pieces that I just think I'm really proud of and that's one of them. It's good and I'm really pleased about it and I'm really happy with it but then it, it sort of, it's not quite, it doesn't do everything that I want it to do and no sculpture ever can. I'm thinking, okay, I'll make another one, I'll have to do another one and I'll have to keep going and I'm really excited because i got another great idea and that'll be brilliant. And then you just keep going and going and going. And there are lots and lots of really exciting sculptures that you're dreaming of, you're drawing, or you've got the maquettes for, and you want to see them in wood because every time you change the material, they become something else. Um, the drawing is two-dimensional. You can't walk around the back of that. So that's you, you've got to make it in 3D. You make it in paper or you make it in clay, and it becomes something else. That material takes over and it changes it. The ultimately, that bottom line for starting a piece is movement. It's about making a static, inert piece of material have a bit of life and become alive. So that's, I don't want that sort of, I want something to really sort of get up and look as though it's just sort of frozen in motion. It's just, it's about, when you're not looking, it's going to start moving around. My inspiration for um, some of my designs comes from um, sort of natural forms which you might find on the beach. So I do quite a few sort of scrub pieces, especially with my turning, um, which are also coloured. They actually attract more than people who just collect wood, they actually attract people who collect ceramics as well, because it's a good way of, um, you know, breaking up collections. But I also get inspiration from, I can actually just see a, a feature, maybe on a building, or in a room of the client and I can uh, be inspired by this and actually take features and actually come up with a, um, a design which will fit into the situation of the client's specification and also the practicality of the piece. <laughs> My name's Mark, I'm a gardener here and uh, I look after the grounds and take care of the trees and all the shrub beds and stuff. And we manage the trees by pruning any dead out of them and keeping them away from buildings so we have to prune them to keep them away from windows and fire escapes and doors. We also pick up all the leaves in the autumn because obviously deciduous trees drop a lot of leaves during the autumn. And that's uh, what we mainly do with the trees. Um, I'm working here because I trained in forestry at Sparsha College and it was a state sort of work, so this is similar to what I trained in. And yeah, I quite like working here. You certainly can see the beauty in the trees, uh, especially when they're in flower, like the cherry behind you, and they give natural shade. So uh, on hot days you can shelter underneath them. They're nice to look at and uh, they're good. I think for your peace of mind. Yeah, I like trees. Um, that's why I studied with them at Spa Shelf because I enjoy working outdoors, but I also like working with trees.
I am actually a member of various um, guilds, which is the next county to Hampshire, which I'm based in, and also the Surrey Guild. But uh, I'm also on the Cross Council list up in London, also a registered professional turner with a livery company, the Worshipful Company of Turners in London. These bodies are very good to be associated with because it gives, you know, national recognition for the quality of work which I actually do. Most of my sort of work uh, takes part in the southeast of England and up towards London. So within a sort of 70 to 80 mile radius of the, uh, the workshop. So I go and actually see a client to discuss what uh, they require and actually have a, like a site visit to see what other furniture i got or interiors. Government policy on trees, I think it's world policy on trees, there aren't enough, there ought to be encouraged. We need more and more and more trees. Um, and trees in the first 15 years, CO2 from the atmosphere, then much, much older trees. So we need those young ones. Um, we ought to be looking at sustainability, we ought not to be chopping down any more of the rainforest. So this government's policy, thankfully, where they were going to sell off the woodland into private hands is, is atrocious and thankfully that, that's got, um, that got binned. But we shouldn't be importing wood necessarily, not on the scale that we are. People that are just, they're chopping down in rainforests, uh, they're, they're shipping it to somewhere else before they can brand it and label it so that we bring it over. So there's lots of good things where we are making sure that we've got sustainable um, resources coming through, that we are um, identifying trees that aren't coming out of virgin rainforest and all that sort of thing. It's not good enough yet. Um, and this is a world problem. And there we all, I'd get rid of McDonald's for a start. They're chopping down far too much. I hate them and we ought to, any new development of housing ought to be surrounded by trees. It, it, there just ought to be more everywhere. Uh, timber in this uh, country, a lot of the sort of manufactured pieces which you see in, on the high street, and the timber has actually come from um, sort of managed sources, which might be a sort of various plantations in um, sort of France, Germany, or the former Yugoslavia, Croatia. These countries tend to have a very good management of plantations, uh, with a sort of typical oak tree. Um, it might be a sort of left for so 80 to 120 years before it is harvested and obviously made into you know, products. In this country we don't tend to have many um, areas which the timber is actually grown for, um, you know, furniture in, in particular, because every sort of climate has a, a different um, sort of growth, um, speed of growth. Sort of traditionally sort of France and Germany have always been slightly warmer than this, this country, so to trees tend to grow a little faster. But finally in France, um, we used to get a lot of oak. A lot of the um, sort of green oak on buildings still comes from France, but they actually keep their best oak for um, making barrels and casks for wine, which is a, a funny aspect. But obviously the best timber in this country tends to actually um, go for furniture, but it's a very small percentage. So a lot of timber in this country, if it is harvested, is actually um, going for um, the construction world rather than the fine furniture. 
the reason that I joined the Forestry Commission was because I, um, I decided that I wanted to have a career in countryside management. The Forestry Commission offered me a job as recreation ranger, which meant that I could work outside, which is where I uh, like to be. I think anybody who works for the Forestry Commission does it for the lifestyle. I don't think you probably get anybody who works in the Forestry Commission particularly for the money. I think you'll, you'll find most people who work in the forest do it because they enjoy the outdoor life and they like working in, in that kind of environment. You have to be happy to work outdoors in all weathers. You have to uh, not mind mud and cold and wind and rain. Obviously, you get the benefits of working when the weather's nice as well. And as I say, it's an outdoor lifestyle that people go for when they come to work for the Forestry Commission. And I think really most people have got quite a deep interest in the natural world. I don't know how most of us feel about the trees. I mean, I personally love being amongst the trees, but of course, we do cut them down. Sometimes it's hard when you watch the oak trees coming down, but of course, the Forestry Commission has a management uh, plan, which we adhere to, where the trees get thinned and then felled and then replanted. It's sort of a, a sustainable policy of the continuation of the forest. I personally wouldn't want to have to operate a chainsaw and cut the trees down, um, but, you know, that has to be done. And um, usually um, you can see the benefits of it. Just to reiterate, it's all to do with the outdoor lifestyle and working with nature. My name's John Ward, I'm the head gardener at the university. My job is basically to look after all the grounds, all the plants, including the trees. How do I manage the trees? We basically get a tree report done every three years and they go around and survey all 700 of our trees and they tell us which ones have got diseases, which ones uh, have dangerous dead branches on and what needs to be done. Uh, and then we'll either do them in-house the university gardens team or if they're too big a job for us we'll call in some tree surgeons and get them to do it for us. I think one of the other reasons that people come to work for the Forestry Commission is you know they they appreciate the beauty of nature. There's all sorts of, of beauty that you can find and I, th I certainly think that every tree is a work of art really. They're all so different, there is such diversity Everybody uh, enjoys watching the passing of the seasons. In this particular wood that we're in at the moment, um, you get stunning bluebells with the most beautiful colours. It's soon followed by the lovely spring green of the beech trees. And you can watch the seasons pass and the colours change. And I, I think anybody would be able to see uh, the beauty in that. And you can certainly translate it into art if you if you like painting or drawing or photography, I think many people come here to take photos so that they can go home and paint what they see. And uh, there's all manner of different shapes and colors. And um, I would say that, you know, woods are all part of the, the art of nature. Can I see the art in the tree? No, but the tree's too big. And like I said, I won't normally well, I don't have a chop down a tree. I won't go and select a tree that I want chopped down because I want to use it. 
I will take the tree once it's gone. So there are some trees that I know are going to be exciting to work with, um, like a piece of yew or uh, some twisted bits of, of tree and, and whatever. Um, there are some woods that are wonderful, so you, any of the fruit woods are going to be glorious. They're lovely, lovely woods to work with. Yeah, I, I sort of try and select what I can from the bits of wood. So, but quite often what people do is give me the trunk, the straight bit. And what I don't want is the trunk. I don't want that straight bit. I want the bits where there are junctions. So I want the junction between the top of the trunk and where it'll go out into the branches because I can start to use that corner, as it were, um, or where it sort of does something like that. And so you can use that sort of opening out sense. Sometimes just cut into it and you, you, know, you have to wait until you know what you're going to do with it sometimes. I'll try anything. I really don't mind. I'll have a go at seeing whatever happens, really, with a bit of wood. Why am I working here? Good question. I, uh, I left school, fell into gardening, arrived here 16 years ago as a bit of summer help, uh, and I just haven't left. And somehow I've ended up as head gardener. Do I like my job? Uh, yeah, I think of worse jobs to do. Do I like trees? Yeah, I like trees. Um, I don't think this campus would be the same without them, really. Um, if you took the trees away, it'd be a totally different place. Can you see art and beauty from trees? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, it's to say that, yeah. I mean, you just have to look at them. I mean, at the moment, they're architecturally quite nice without the leaves. And then once the leaves come in, um, they make such a big difference. Uh, do you think everything in nature is art? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> one of the things about being a gardener is to spend your whole life trying to battle nature, basically. You spend your whole life trying to get rid of things that you don't want somewhere and making things grow where they don't want to grow. So I wouldn't say everything in nature is art. You have to uh, not mind mud and cold and wind and rain. I'll try anything. I really don't mind. I'll have a go at seeing whatever happens, really, with a bit of wood. Love being amongst the trees, but of course, we do cut them down. Sometimes it's hard when you watch the oak trees coming down. Being a gardener is to spend your whole life trying to battle nature. I moved here because it was so woody and lovely. And I, th I certainly think that every tree is a work of art, really. The natural landscape is all around us, but we maybe have forgotten about. Everything in nature is art. It's perfect every color, every picture. Anything in nature is never a strange thing. For me, here is a beautiful place like heaven, but people may not realize. Everyone has different points of view about trees. How about yours? Today, the nature is dancing in the wind. Everything is alive with movement.